And is this the first time you've been in Netherlands? Uh, it is, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been uh, uh, seeing all the things I can see before I get out of here. The food, great. Good. People, really nice. So uh, I've been really enjoying my stay. Yeah. And are you just in Utrecht or Amsterdam? So? No, I, I went to Amsterdam. I, I stayed there a little bit, did all the touristy things. Uh, and then uh, I went to Utrecht. Yeah. Utrecht? Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Uh, Central yesterday, that was very beautiful. We saw the canals and it was just like, it's nice. It's yeah. what a nice quaint. Uh, you've played in a lot of uh, movies and TV shows, but you've also written and directed Small Timers. When, when did you decide to go that direction? Is that something you always wanted to do? I started out as, as an actor, right? And I think uh, I started back in Texas. And opportunities weren't as, uh, uh, as mu uh, much of a plethora out in Texas as they were in LA or anything. So uh, I kind of took it in my own hands and started making my own content at the time. And this is early before like YouTube even. Uh, and so I started making these little like series and stuff like that uh, for the internet. That's really cool. Like yeah. in the early days, that's in like... The early days. I was ahead of my time. Uh, but uh, a producer had seen some of those shorts I had done and, and then asked me to come on board for, for a movie and help write it and produce it. But uh, that, and that, that took like three years of my life, which was in incredible. And also like my, my film school, basically. I just I learned how to make a movie, a full length movie from beginning to end, with, from every role possible, from director, writer, actor, uh, casting. And uh, it was an incredible experience. And I was able to make a movie and get it distributed all around the world and online. It was, it, That's amazing. It, it, yeah, it really was. But I think the biggest thing was the thought that it was even possible it kept like, I'm doing this, I'm, I'm making it. And it was like a struggle. But in the end, like, you, I just kept moving forward through it. And then you finish it. And then you go through the next step. And then from finishing the movie, it's like in post-production. And they're like, it's just, and that was like, that it's was, like keeps going. It, it kept going, and things kept falling apart. But in the end, like the movie uh, got made and it got distributed. And I made it into Blockbuster, which <laughs> before it went out of business, and that was a big dream of mine was like to make a movie and see it in Blockbuster, and there it was. So uh, wild. Did it inspire you to do more writing, directing, or maybe like scare you off? Uh, you know what was funny is that after that stand, I took a break because I was like losing my hair. Uh, but uh, yeah, once I took a break and like uh, thought about it, I started producing content again in the way in which I, I wanted to. Uh, and the internet now was just like flourishing with all kinds of uh, internet content. So I started messing around with that and started making shorts and things like that. And uh, yeah, and recently I just made like, I like to play around with format. So recently I made a Instagram um, stories uh, sitcom, which is basically like a comedic series on Instagram stories. That sounds really good. And we, we, yeah, we shot it vertical, you know, like 16 by 9, and just played with that format, and that's been really fun, and, and it's been getting some some traction. So that's been really cool. It's on my Instagram. You can check it out, and uh, we we put it into IGTV, so it, like you can watch it all on its own. But you could also click through the highlights, and it's just an interesting experience in a way to consume content, especially nowadays. So uh, that's kind of what I've been playing with is some some fun ways to put out content yeah. it's yeah it's called teenage dad watch it uh, with the Oscar uh, winning um, actor Richard Dreyfus so check it out awesome. <laughs> yeah. in all of the acting you've done all the movies it's a lot of action I found mm. um, is there any role that you wanted to play didn't get a chance to yet or that you hope like any other show you would like to be on that's currently so in Texas I started doing directed DVD action movies with like you know uh, some of those uh, old famous stars that you would see like Dolph Lundgren and Kevin Sorbo and that kind of got me that was my beginnings as an actor was these types of movies and the stunt guys would also um, uh, I would do my own stunts so I, I learned a lot a bit, a bit about that so I kind of like got these movies based on that kind of doing a little bit of my own stunts being able to do that and also do the acting part of it so that was really great and I loved it and I think the biggest thing for me was like in Texas one of my goals was to be I would do a lot of supporting but I was like I wanted to be a lead you know in one of these movies and it took like a few years but I, I ended up finally getting my shot it's called uh, Infiltrators it's yeah. it's uh, 
uh, it's you could catch it online, but it, on Amazon, and it was uh, the epitome of like being in an action movie and an action film, which was really fun, and being a lead. You know that that was the dream, yeah. and that was once again that was like something I had wanted and just set, kept going, and it ended up happening. So I think with that, uh, I would like to parlay that into something more grand, maybe in one of the the bigger universes. Marvel would be great. Star Wars, all the all the cool stuff, maybe something new. Which is your favorite superhero? You know, I uh, so for a while, as a young kid, because I was very angry, it was Wolverine. As I grew up, I liked uh, when the Iron Man series came out, which I really just love Robert Downey and is the way in which he portrayed Iron Man is his charm and he was snarky. Then as I got a little older, I liked uh, Captain America a lot, which in the beginning I didn't like. I was like, he's too goody two shoes, right? So, but over time, watching finally Endgame and everything, I found that he had just this altruistic spirit that wanted good for you know, and I just I love that so I think uh, I'm still having around uh, Tony Stark and uh, uh, Captain America right now like nice. combo yeah would you ever cosplay at a convention this is such an obscure reference but Return to Oz which is Wizard of Oz and there's this weird movie called Return to Oz there's these weird wheelers they're just these weird creatures on like skates like it's they're so weird and I want to I want to be able to like cosplay that but it seems like almost impossible to make. I mean, maybe I, I get somebody to commission it. I don't know. That'd be weird. I would love to do that. But you can, like, get help, obviously. Right. I need lots of help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, Netflix is coming up with uh, Size Manos, if I pronounce this uh, correctly. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Like, what it's about and your uh, character, Jes Jesus? Jesus, yeah. Uh, very good. Seis Manos, uh, which means six hands in Spanish. Um, the series is in English, and it's about these... Uh, three Mexican orphans who uh, learn Kung Fu from a, uh, from a sensei who takes them in and basically they have to fight against like weird Mexican voodoo and so like these weird creatures start to come about like all this like uh, Mexican culture is really like thick in it and then there's Eastern philosophy and it's this really wild combination of cultures as well as crazy violence and some really true heart and I play Jesus uh, who is a um, he, his style of fighting is uh, drunken boxing, kind of like maybe like Jackie Chan. So to get really, to, to really beat some people up, he's got to get a little toasty. Uh, and so that was really fun to play as this, just an actor and a, 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 on a, a voice actor. It's really fun to like find those sounds and the way in which, you know, uh, he would portray or I would portray this character. Um, and it was, it's great. I think the series really has just a lot of heart and people really, really enjoying it. So definitely check it out. We got to get that season two. It ended on a cliffhanger. You voice a character in Overwatch. I'm not a big gamer, so sorry, I haven't haven't heard it. But is there any difference to voicing a character for an animation series or uh, a game? So yeah, there there are differences. It's just depending uh, the motion capture, which is your actually physical self is acting within <clears throat> the world. And I'm in a game called Need for Speed that they took my likeness, so you could you could literally go in the game and see me as a CGI character, which is wild to me. But that, we went on set and basically had to wear these full-on suits and you're doing like a, a performance basically for people behind computers like watching your every motion, but it's like theater. You know, uh, I called it teched out theater, which is really cool and it's really still fulfilling in a different way. But voice acting in a booth a lot of times, it's just you on the mic, right? And so you're having to really convey things with just your voice and not your face, right? Which can be very freeing and fun because you can do anything to find that right sound that conveys the sincerity that you really uh, want to convey, you know, so. An animation, is it, sometimes it's like storyboarding, right? Or is the animation finished yet when you add your voice to it? No, uh, a lot of times it's, uh, you can get an animatic, which is basically like sketched out and it kind of like moves kind of staccato, but usually they take your voice first and then they animate on top of that. Or if you do like, you know, anime, they basically, it's already done, so you have to dub on top of it. So they have to like kind of write it so it squeezes into the right amount. So, yeah. So what's the weirdest experience you had? Is there anything that you've been like, whoa, if, if, do you always do it alone? That you can see other acts doing or where you weren't really into it, you're like, okay, no one can see this, but I'm so going for it. I mean, in the booth, uh, on the mic, you could really, there's there's these things called efforts, and they're the, the part of the game where you're either like getting hit, you're falling off a cliff, 
you're dying. Finding those sounds could be really weird and awkward, like you're being electrocuted, right? What does that sound like? So you could just see somebody in the booth being like, right? And you have to find that sound. So uh, yeah, it looks, sometimes it can look really weird, <laughs> but it, those to me, the most fun. I was gonna say, you need to live for it, right? I mean, that's the fun yeah. about doing that. Yeah, it's getting to really express yourself and be in this other world and, and create something, right? You're creating something and opening yourself up. Exactly, yeah. Right now, uh, they just came out, so definitely check out Seis Manos uh, on Netflix and uh, get in Need for Speed. Crash your Lamborghinis, get in there. Like, that would be, that would be great. Those two are the, the mainstays right now and uh, anything else, uh, there's Overwatch 2 coming out. So uh, definitely uh, be on the lookout for that, and uh, yeah. And of course, my Instagram, at Johnny Cruz, J-O-N-N-Y-C-R-U-Z-Z-Z. -Z -Z. And that's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thank <laughs> you.